So welcome to Profile 3 TV and today we're going to talk about lifestyle financial planning. So Paul, thank you very much for coming in and talking to us today. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So Paul McCubrey, mm -hmm. I'm a partner and independent financial planner at Navigate IFA. Mm -hmm. We're a financial planning practice based on the Hollywood Road in East Belfast. Uh, I've been a financial planner now for 18 years, starting off at companies like Prudential and Northern Bank. And then I decided at 26, 2006 uh, to go out on my own and start working my way up the ladder within the independent financial planning uh, arena. So I've been with Navigate now for five years. Mm -hmm. The business was set up by my two business partners just the year before and I merged my existing business at the time with them. Outside of work, I married to Helen. We live in Doak uh, with our two dogs. Uh, Hobbies-wise, I go to the gym consistently. Uh, enjoy most sports, football being the main one. So tell us tell us about Navigate. So as I say, Navigate was formed in 2014 by my two business partners, Darren Curry and Michael Hamill. Um, we have all we all came, come from a bank background and got very dis, uh, disillusioned with the way the, the bank offer financial advice and some of the obviously the media stories that were going around maybe five, six years ago and mis-selling, et cetera. I was a partner at another firm and we, we have known each other for many years and we just uh, had been in talks and uh, I we decided to merge the two businesses and create Navigate IFA. So as I say, we are a financial planning practice. We would help our clients from buying their first house right the way through to protecting their last house. It could be estate planning, long-term care planning, that sort of thing. We are a business, we have three specific divisions within the business. We have our mortgage business, Navigate Mortgages. We have our wealth business, which I would call our lifestyle financial planning business, which is the main core of what we do. And we also have a specialist business called Na Navigate Retirement, which is a pension transfer mm -hmm. advice business. It's very niche. Uh, it's really only been going for about a year. Uh, but we help clients with some complex pension transfers around final salary, defined benefit schemes, but also we do a lot of work in Australia. These are benefits for expats living in Australia to review their pensions and the options that they have. So we work with a company in Australia. We help with the UK side of things. Amazing. So, uh, and you look after part of the business then? Or which department do you work in? So I would see myself as having three roles within the business. Mm -hmm. One is overseeing the business. We went through a lot of change mm -hmm. in the last year. Last year and a half, we've nearly doubled in size, up to 11 staff. Um, we then decided to set up the mortgage business, which is really what I worked in a lot, and I wanted to take a step back and bring in a mortgage advisor to run that. So we've done that, and we separated that business, which is going from strength to strength. So I oversee the business. I work as a sort of sales manager, business development manager on the property side. And then I have my own. I've been doing the job for 18, 18 years now. Oh. Uh, so I've got my own clients that I looked after, which is... Part of the business I would like to do more in, but at the minute it's just where we're at. Amazing, so incredible credentials then for talking about what we're going to talk about today. So, yeah. Uh, what, what would be a typical client then? So for me, we cover a broad range, as I say, we cover right from your startup, you know, your start of your financial journey, which typically is getting your first mortgage right the way through to estate plan and care home fees, as I say. Mm -hmm. A typical client for me would be someone who's maybe approaching 50, starting to get worried about retirement. I'm wondering, what am I going to do? Um, and I I enjoy working with business owners myself, or probably someone who has similar uh, demographic to myself, who are uh, busy all the time, don't have much time to really take care of these sort of things. They want to outsource their finances. They maybe don't have a, a lot of money in the bank to invest, but they've maybe got good surplus income and they want to know that with that surplus income, it's working for them and that they're planning for the future. Incredible. So yeah, there's a lot of people probably watching this who are, who are your typical uh, customer that Yeah, amazing. just so and, busy. And, and do you find that a lot of people haven't actually got a plan in place or haven't ever thought of this? Yes. I would majority of people wouldn't have an actual financial plan written down with what they're trying to achieve, what their goals are, how they're going to achieve it, what they need to do. In my experience, you tend not to, appro you tend not to uh, approach for financial advice or go looking for financial advice unless there's a wee bit of pain and there's something needs done. So buying a house, moving house, 
you need to go and speak to a mortgage advisor. You don't get too many people phoning you saying, I need life insurance or I want life insurance. Mm -hmm. And certainly with the whole pensions, people know they need to do something, but they never get round to doing it. The pain's not strong enough. And that's why I think when you start to get that bit older, and I use 50 as a benchmark, but you start to, oh, oh there's not much. Someone said to me, a 46 year old said to me recently, he wants to retire at 60, only 14 Christmases left. And that starts to resonate. Wow, yeah, that's not a good way to say it. Yeah. You start having uh, panic attacks like that. That's mm -hmm. incredible. And it's amazing that so many people, like you know, as you say, we, we've we talked about business owners, we've got a business plan and we've got a marketing plan, but we don't look after plan for health or plan for wealth or yeah. plan for retirement. So the, the critical things, what yeah. we're doing, are building our business first. So amazing. You, you, you talk about lifestyle uh, financial planning. So what what is that? Yes, so lifestyle finance planning to me is financial planning done properly, Kieran. It would, it's really, it's more of a new approach, a uh, relatively new approach to personal financial planning. It's about actually sitting down with clients and understanding what their lifestyle is today and what they want it to be in the future and getting away from product sales. You may need a product, but that may come on down the line. First and foremost, it's about really understanding what a client wants what their lifestyle looks like today and what they want to look like in the future. And sitting down and working out okay, where, where they are today, what they have today, and if they keep doing what they're doing today, where they're going to end up. So for example, a client who wants to start saving for retirement, maybe in the old days you would have just set up a pension and whatever amount of money they wanted to put into it, they would do that. Where with financial plan, lifestyle financial planning, you're actually sitting down and going, well, when would you like to retire? How much would you like to have to retire? How much will you need? What are you going to have along the way? Do you need to clear a mortgage? Do you have children to go through university? And we would go away and take that and through looking at what they have today, what's available to them today, but either now or in the future, and come back to them and tell them how realistic that plan is and what they potentially need to do to try and make sure they achieve their goals. Wow, incredible. So it really is, a, like I, we, we talk a lot about uh, marketing strategy here, so it really is a yeah. strategy. You sit down, you understand the, the person's yeah. situation and then yeah. use your experience then to map out. And really get to know, get to know them. A lot yeah. of people, the state pension for someone of 40 is 68, could well go to 70. Yeah. Not a lot of people want to work till they're 70. Yeah. Yeah. So unless you start actually putting some plans in place and actually focusing on something, you're not you're not going to get there. So I like to think of it as a roadmap, like a personal finance sat nav that we put an end date in place and we work towards it. But along the way, we're going to have ups and downs. And but if you're plan it out and you look ahead, Amazing. it'll you can only get there quicker. Incredible. And and you mentioned pensions. So pensions now that uh, historically pensions would have been the main. Uh, driver for retirement, but you see people do other things then now? Yes, there's lo there, there, there are lots of strategies. At the end of the day, pension is just a strategy or a tool to get you there. But what are you, where are you trying to get to? What mm -hmm. do you need? And then work backwards as to what that strategy may be. The main ones that we would tend to deal with would be our businesses. So anyone who has their own business is part of your strategy. Can you sell it or will it provide you with a pension or in the future? Uh, pensions obviously save them monthly. Pensions have been ridiculed in the past and some of that quite rightly, but since pension changes in, two, I always forget, 2015, 2016, to me, are the best way to build long-term wealth. Uh, property is obviously mm -hmm. key a key uh, strategy and in Northern Ireland and the UK we are all property mad and mm -hmm. want to own property so they are all just different strategies and tools to help you get to where you want to go and it's just where they fit. It. Yeah, it's about fitting in which ones work for you. And Incredible. And you find when people, so you can tell I'm not sophisticated in this so uh, yeah. they could talk but uh, do, do people actually know where they want to be or end up or do you think or do you find you have to... Very invest? few. I've never thought Very of it. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think now, oh dear, where do I want to be? It all starts with how much does life cost today? Mm -hmm. well. And people run scared of actually sitting down to work that out because it's scary. Don't want to know. You know, life is expensive, so they don't want to know. And when we ask them, they actually put some thought and fill in a very detailed spreadsheet to work this out. A lot of the time it comes back and I'm questioning. 
you know, they've maybe put down a thousand pounds a year for holidays, but they've been to Disney World with the family last year, and they would like to do more of that type of holiday. So they don't want to face up to it. But once you face up to it and understand, and hopefully you have enough money coming in to cover that lifestyle, it's, we're in the different conversation if you if you're don't have enough. But if you know where that is, then you can look to the future and say, right, well, when I retire, I want to have this. Mm. And as a very rough starting point, most people want the life they enjoy today. They want to have no mortgage, and they want to know they can do the things that they can do. And people are happy. Maybe it's not retirement in the old-fashioned sense of retirement, of just you know, stopping on a Friday and that's you. At 60, 65, a lot of people now are obviously working in retirement, but they're working because they want to work and enjoy it and get out of the house and have a purpose. It's, uh, which is very different. Yes, some people, as you say, just keep working and working and working, and uh, it's, it's part of their yeah. their life. That's it. Amazing. Yeah, they're going to have no choices if they don't start um, thinking about it. Amazing, amazing. I just always think of the trades. I'm a friend who are all tradesmen, and the backs are going, the knees are going. At 40, how are they, what are they going to be at? It's 50, 60, and says scary. Amazing. I think it's a big. The introduction of the auto enrollment pensions for the younger generation are going to be a massive help yeah. for, the, for them. Yeah. But the people who are maybe on further down the line, it's not going to have such a benefit. Amazing. And, and obviously, things today are the price they are today, but in 10 or 20 or 30 years, things tend to get a wee bit more expensive. Yeah. So you have to build Inflation. that in. Yeah, we can build that in. We use really uh, powerful software that helps to project all that and thankfully do all the sums so there's no fancy, no <laughs> complex spreadsheets anymore, etc. But it does that and brings it out into nice graphs and different colors and clients can really engage that. Uh, that we would call that cash flow forecasting. But you or I don't know what the price of anything is going to be in mm -hmm. 10 years time. So we just have to make certain assumptions and work on today. What is the price of that today? And then the software will we'll put a rate in typically over and above what we think it would be and sure. average it out. Amazing. But no, you're totally right. So I have no idea. So I haven't done this. So I, we'll be talking after for sure. But uh, it's amazing yeah, when you start thinking um, thinking the cost of this year and then thinking add some inflation in. Like, yeah. wow, okay. So, But as uh, you said earlier, you've probably done that exercise with your business because cost continually goes up. Staff, <laughs> what's new, every, uh, new staff, pension costs, amazing. rates. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> enough, enough. <laughs> so, uh, financial planning, people might see it as a luxury, um, and uh, I'll do it next year, or I'll do it in six months. Yeah. What, what would you think or say around, around that? I would say that's a fair comment today. The cost of, regula the, cost of the regulations to provide good, honest financial planning has just gone up and up in the last 10 years, um, and shows no no, uh, show no sign of stopping, mm -hmm. which means that as a practice, we have had to look at well, what is what are how are our fees structured, how they cost to make sure that we're in business to make a profit. Mm -hmm. So, I would say it's a luxury, I would say it's an aspiration, mm -hmm. uh, especially for those who are starting out and starting to accumulate and starting to save and, and really uh, are looking to build long term wealth. Um, that to have a financial planner will only help you get there quicker. Uh, however, the costs have to be relative and the value within that. Mm -hmm. But there are so many good res resources out there now online. Um, there are some great podcasts I listen to them most mornings on the way in, the way home from work, um, which is all about starting at the beginning and really for the younger generation to try and get them saving. Um, and obviously there's a whole wealth of books out there. Incredible. But yeah, so in America we have the what's called the FAR community, which is the Financial Independence Retire Early. I think it stands for. I always get that wrong. Which is a really about uh, what you can do today to free up money out of your out of your income to save and invest to make sure that you've got money in the future. Incredible. Yeah, some of it is going a bit too far in my opinion, but uh, some of the schemes I've heard of people how they can save money and. Uh, you know, like couples living together and, and all this because it's all about as much money so they can save. But it shows you what can be done in the power of, you know, everyone can save, for can sure. cut back, save and make their money work for them. Okay, because we do, you do see the odd uh, article in the newspaper where someone has done something for a number of years and they've ended up buying their house yeah. or retiring early. So as you say, it can be done. Yeah, as I always say, if you don't give money a job, it'll not work for you. 
So you need to give your money a job. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, there's more month than there is money. Now, the common one for me is I try to save at the end of the month, but when you get down to the last weekend of the month and you're down to your last 100 pounds, are you, are you going to save it or are you going to enjoy your weekend? Yeah. And most people will enjoy the weekend. Totally. Whereas, start the saving on the first of the month when you get paid. I'm sure if you need to get it, take it out, you can. Chances are you won't, because mm. it'll start to build and build a habit and, you know, of, of building long-term wealth. And is that, that's one of the things you'd advise and young people, all people, to take a little bit of the salary at the start of the month and put it away? Yeah. So that's not just, it's not what I say, it's, it's been in books for, for many, many years now. Oh. Pay yourself first. Of course. So when you get your, typically you get your salary, the tax man's had their cut mm -hmm. of it. Now you're saving into your pension through auto enrollment, which is fantastic. So you are paying yourself first, but typically your bills will come out. So all of a sudden, everybody else gets paid and you're left with the rest and that has to see you through to the end of the month. Whereas pick an amount, the real, you know, 10% tithing has always been the, the sort of starting point. Pick an amount, start saving for your long-term future. It's money you're not going to touch, invest it and just let it grow and build and build and build. So I was looking actually there recently for uh, a client who had just had a baby. And if they invest, if they started as soon as first month baby born, if you see it, the hundred pounds a month for 18 years, and they got a return of 6%, they'd have in the round 30,000 pounds for that child when they're 18. Incredible. Which will go a long way to help them with university. Or deposit the house, house or anything. Yeah, yeah, incredible. That's amazing. What a start. Yeah. Instead of giving them a new mobile phone yeah. on their 18th. It just shows you about. Amazing. Brilliant. I love it. Uh, so, again, one of the questions I always have, um, you know, thinking of school, uh, you, you learn maths, you learn, yeah. you know where <laughs> I'm going with this. Yeah. One thing you don't learn about, you know, I'm thinking maths and geography, I could draw you a map of Italy right now uh, and everything, every little mountain and everything, but you, we don't do financial from no. that I know of uh, today, even still financial planning or managing money in detail. Yeah. Is that a big miss? Still, I think it's getting better. Gotcha. Um, the schools are trying. I think it is all, I've asked uh, teachers, etc. when I've been with them and there is a form part of it of the syllabus, but as far as I know, it's still not, you know, to me, it should be a, a big, a big part of the syllabus, but I always rake about doing presentations, etc. And I went to school had no real interest. But if I was taught how to boil an egg, iron a shirt, change a tire, and what a mortgage was or a credit card, You're set for life, I would have been in a much better place than I am now. And Isn't the power it? of saving, yeah. I think, the the difference from a twenty five year old to start saving to a forty year old, and that time that's lost is just huge. And that's again why the auto enrollment pensions will make such a difference, mm -hmm. especially if you're young in your 20s and you're saving, we're now up to 9% of salary going into, going into pen, your, their, your pension. It's going to make a huge difference. Incredible. Oh, I wish I had that I back know. in the day. <laughs> I always said. So be nice to your kids. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll have the money, which is good, which is good. Brilliant. So what, what's, what's the future? What's, what's next, do you think, in finance and for yourselves? For Navigate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for us, at, the, at this minute in time, we've, as I said before, we've sort of split into three. So we have a lot of work just really get, getting that out there mm -hmm. and um, getting a wee bit of exposure um, of who we are and what we do. And uh, you know, it is just myself, my two business partners who, who set the business up. Um, so we're a very small firm, but that allows us to really look after our clients and, um, provide a really good service, you know, and good relationships with our clients. We see the business growing organically and uh, no plans to, we don't want to grow it to a practice of a lot of, of a lot of advisors. We have uh, a great, we have a great team within the business. As I said earlier, we're up to 11 staff. And mm -hmm. uh, within that, we have a couple, we have um, quite a few of the guys who are doing their exams, maybe in the round of age of 80, who for me, it will be about educating them, developing them as the next generation Amazing. and grow the business organically and within. Amazing. So these are young people coming through the uh, business and doing yeah. exams? So yeah. typically starting an admin role or, or maybe slightly higher. Mm -hmm. 
and pushing into mortgage advisors and Amazing. and then working their way up and starting out. So, so great, and, and you're able to mould these people into the, the, yeah. the person that you want. Uh, well, when I started, you know, I, I spent 12 weeks locked up in a hotel on paid for by Northern Bank and was put through such in, such tra great training, role plays. I can still quote you those role plays today that we had to do them that often. That's not available anymore because the banks aren't in it really in this financial plan field or financial plan and world anymore. So it's very, very difficult. So I think having them work and grow beside and work beside you and watch it is a great way. And obviously then you know who they are and trust and what the difference? Recruitment's a whole and different that's another, another conversation. conversation. Another conversation for another day. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, excellent. So if anyone's watching this and wants to reach out and have a chat about their lifestyle, financial planning, or financial freedom, what's the best way for them to get in touch? So the website, navigateifa.com, mm -hmm. is probably the first port of call. We are active on the usual social media channels, um, but I would go to the website and uh, get in touch. Incredible. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and share. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.